So you want to know the hardest abilities in all of Paladins, huh? Well, you've come to the right place. Today, we're taking a look at the hardest, most inappropriately used, most consistently difficult abilities to take full advantage of in Paladins. There are a ton of abilities that are difficult to master in this game, but these ones stand out amongst the rest. So let's take a look at them right now, starting with number five, Inara's Impasse. Inara's Impasse is a very good ability that allows her to control space and also direct the flow of a battle, but it's one of the most difficult to use appropriately, and here's why. Taking advantage of Impasse mechanically is difficult to do. It takes a lot of time and practice to not only get the right size, but the right spacing of where your wall will actually go up as it relates to the battlefield. A lot of people make smaller walls than they intend, or they put it just before the door when they meant to put it just afterwards, and the only way to actually get those right time and time again is to just practice more and more often. However, imagine if you were trying to escape from a burning building out a window and all of a sudden that window became a solid brick wall would change your uh, life expectancy. As it does in Paladins, a perfect wall can absolutely demolish an enemy's plan, but it takes an awareness of their cooldowns, awareness of the situation, and an awareness of the enemy team and your team in general to be able to pull that off consistently, which is why it ranks as one of the hardest skills in Paladins to use correctly. Moving on to number four. Genosis through time and space. The first thing that's hard about it is the name, especially as a commentator. There's a smite god named Janus, whose ultimate is through space and time, whereas Genosis' ultimate is named through time and space. This was intentional, our designers are jerks. But the other reason this ability finds its way into this list is because it's so difficult to consistently land this ultimate and find value throughout your game. As you get into a higher level of play, more and more people understand that just moving left or right will get you out of the one and a half second wind up before the 2400 damage hits onto an opponent. Although Genos has no way to ultimately guarantee the landing of this ability, he can anticipate where enemies are coming from or going to, and he can also combo off his teammates' abilities and the enemy. Many actions in Paladins have these kind of post-hit delays and lockout moments where you can take advantage of a character being stationary in a predictable manner. Fernando, after his immortal barrack, the second he throws down his dome shield, Drogo's dragon punching, where do you think he's going? A big tank on your team. Whether it's a Makoa pluck, a grumpy bomb stun, you can never guarantee it's going to happen by seeing it coming and then reacting. You have to be proactive and kind of anticipate, which makes this ultimate difficult because there's always this sense of gambling attached to it. The high risk, high reward nature, and the inability to know how much success you'll have from this ultimate, especially going into team fights, makes this one of the harder abilities to use correctly, even at the highest level of the competitive scene. Moving on to number three, we've got Talus' Rune of Travel. Now, Rune of Travel isn't that hard once you understand what you want to do, but figuring out your game plan with this ability is one of the trickiest and probably most most difficult startup tasks I've ever had to do when it comes to Paladin's Champions. The first reason Rune of Travel is difficult is because it requires forethought to use properly. It requires players who have a knowledge of the game or don't have a knowledge of the game to plan in advance, understand their situation, and be prepared for when things go right or go wrong, how they will react. In order to do that, you have to have an understanding of the game at an intimate level. I mean, you don't have to be in love with Paladins, you don't have to make out with it, but I mean, intimately understanding the characters and what they're aiming to do will help you to make sure this ability is not more of a handicap than an opportunity for you to be successful when playing. The second you start this ability, it goes on a 10 second timer. The most interesting part about this is that you can actually change this timer with cards, making it even more of a decision. You can add four seconds or take away four seconds so that it could be a six second timer or a 14 second timer with which you have to roam the realm, do your fights before it will automatically pull you back at the end of the duration to where you started your rune. Do you wait an extra second letting yourself get plucked by a Makoa hook only to know that a second later you will be cleansed before the bonus damage happens? Or do you activate early trying to avoid the Makoa hook in general? Mere seconds in a first person shooter are incredibly important to figuring out who's going to win that moment. An extra second of you applying damage to a target could mean that your team pushes 2-0. And an extra second of you not being in the fight could mean that they don't have enough DPS to finish off the enemy and you're tied 1-1 going into next round. Also, you can have a legendary card that makes it so it doesn't even cleanse and pull you back at the end of it so you can keep resetting it, which makes it even more of a question as to whether you stay there risking the fact that you may be in a bad spot and now will be unable to travel back to where your rune of travel was, or if you go back early knowing that you're going to have to remove yourself from the fight when it could have been a great moment to push the payload. Combined with all the decisions you have to make, the awareness of the map and the enemy situation that's required to take full advantage of this ability, and also the fact that it's relatively difficult to understand and so manipulatable with legendary cards and normal cards, this ability goes number third on my list of the most difficult in Paladins. Number two on the 
the list of the most difficult abilities in Paladins goes to Ying and her Dimensional Link. Now, Ying has always been a champion that I've strayed away from. I like healers, I don't mind them, but Ying has never really fit my playstyle. And it's partly because of Dimensional Link. It's a very difficult ability to master, so much so that a master Ying player versus a beginner or novice Ying player will be put to school. I don't care if it's summertime, I don't care if it's winter break, you will be taught a lesson if you try to mess with someone who understands how to use Dimensional Link and you don't. Not only can you avoid so many things, not only is the upside so strong for Master Ying players when using this ability correctly, but again, it takes forethought, patience, and awareness of the game to use it properly. During Dimensional Link, Ying is able to teleport for a duration of time to her clones, being the most recent ones that are put up or the current ones at B. She can teleport as long as she wants to as many different locations during the time period of Dimensional Link, and she can also make sure that she shatters clones during the Dimensional Link, fires during dimensional link and also repositions to end where she wants to after that cooldown has finally come to an end. The best Yings have to keep track of where they put their clones, not just for healing but for escaping and that can be very difficult trying to multitask that while a big first person shooter battle is going on in front of you. A master Ying is such a fun thing to watch because dimensional link can absolutely buy time, it can confuse opponents and it can also give Ying the much needed space or retreat option that she needs to regroup with her squad and be ready to retake the objective. But because of the nature of the mechanical options that are allowed during this movement skill, the duration of the skill that can be used to your advantage and definitely to your disadvantage, and also the pre-planned nature of this movement skill, which is so crucial to maximizing this character, I put Ying's Dimensional Link as the number two most difficult ability in Paladins. Last but not least, we have our number one, and this may be a surprise to some, but to me, this is right on the money. The most difficult ability to use in Paladins, in my opinion, correctly, is Zen's Spite. Now, of course, you can use Zen Spite onto a target. That's fine, but that doesn't mean it's correct. A lot of times when you use this ultimate, you will die immediately because you don't do enough damage at base. Spite, because of its lack of damage, does mean that it's not able to finish off high health targets, and it's barely able to finish off targets that aren't Eevee or Sky. Heck, I don't even think it could finish off Sky at this point. Why would you use your ultimate, make yourself completely invulnerable, lock yourself out of all of your abilities when with four swings of your sword in a matter of seconds, probably faster than your ultimate takes to go off, you could do the same amount of damage. Of course, running guillotine makes this a lot more deadly and decreases the TTK, the time to kill, onto enemy opponents. However, it does not mean that you're picking Zen's best legendary for Zen in general, because Retaliation and Billow, or excuse me, Smolder, both allow him so many more flexible options on the battlefield. The other reason this is super difficult to make use of is because you are completely vulnerable. You're not CC immune, you're not damage immune, which means you are a sitting duck for a sniper, a damage dealer, a tank, even a flank to come and attack you while you are doing that low 2,000 damage to a target. Oftentimes, it's more likely that Zen will die while using Spite than the enemy he is using Spite on, and that's just terrible. And not terrible in general, it does provide a value. It locks an opponent in place. That's extremely valuable in a first-person shooter, but it's just high risk, high reward, so it's terribly difficult to make sure it works in Zen's favor all the time. Despite this ultimate being super anime, super awesome, and super exciting when you do get it perfectly, especially to finish off targets who are trying to get away and your team has already kind of won the fight. To use this ultimate time and time and again, consistently getting value out of it without dying yourself, I think is one of the hardest things to do in Paladins, bar none. And if you think differently, at me. At me, dog. Actually, follow me on Brain Day Gaming. I, I would appreciate if you added me, though. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with my list? Do you have another one that you think should have been in here? Would you have a sixth or a seventh, an honorable mention that I didn't throw out there? I did leave some off the table. And I had to cut it into five, so there are some that I would agree with, so make sure in the comment section you let me know your opinions. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to see more of this series and other stuff on my channel. As always, friends, remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you all next time.